sorry, the words still have done the damage, you know. And sometimes it takes the person that is on the receiving end a minute to process that, you know, and deal with that. So, um, like I said, I'm yet still learning. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I also agree with Mom Carol that, um, and in accordance with your, you know, your teachings and um, my notes and the study, um, because I personally have been dealing with that on, you know, on a, a very real level. Um, I, I, over the last six months, I've grown for it because it's so true that if you have conflict within yourself. You know, you can definitely not deal with conflict outside of yourself with someone else. So whatever the conflict is, you have to find where you are in that. You have to find where you are in the conflict and um, talk to yourself. Uh, look, look up scripture to find out what, you're, what that identifies what you what you're feeling and what the scripture says about that. You know, because if you don't do it that way, you're, ne you're never going to deal with it on the first and foremost on a spiritual level. And um, if you don't deal with it that way first inside yourself, it's going to go awry anyway. So that's what I've learned. I've learned that I have to deal with whatever the conflict is that I'm having, I have to deal with where I am in that. That's what I've learned, and it's helping me. Self-control is such a lot of about your head. Like when you when someone does something to you, how you react to that says a lot about what you're saying in your life. So if you react in a negative way, it shouldn't be a negative like to that person, but a negative like to you. The fact that you did, you decided to let someone else's actions influence your emotions. And through that will determine where you're saying. And so a lot of times what do you to me? I act out of myself, and it later shows me when I come back, like, hey man, I apologize, because what I did was still not acceptable, because of the fact I know how I should react, I know what I should do, we as Christians know that we are supposed to put our best foot forward and not, you know what I mean, not let anyone or anything ever get us to that point to where it offends us. Um, I think for me, um, it's been about how much I, uh, I am accepting of that person as who they are, not focusing on any individual problem. But, you know, do I really love them if I, can, if I have some sort of anger or animosity with them? And what does love mean? So having that defined to me. But that's all.
I know how we are. Because a lot of times we take, we take, we take, we take, we take, and we try to refuse, but it builds up. And then you all know what I'm saying, because then when it builds up, you explode. You know, you explode all over everything because of the fact that you've been suppressing it. And that is the thing that I want to make sure that we make clear that suppressing anger is still not a good thing. You know, sometimes we dwell on the actions that we do. I don't really want us to dwell there because that's a bad place. Because you will think to yourself, as long as I don't react the wrong way, then I'm okay. Yeah. And really it's the opposite because if you don't react the wrong way, it just means that you're suppressing something. But you haven't applied the thing or the person that you need to apply in order to make sure that you don't personally get there, if that makes any sense to you. Turn to James chapter 1. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now understand that as a parent, there are times when I have to get upset with my children. Amen? There are times when I have to show that side. When I have to discipline them. I have to show them that I'm not happy with them. Amen? But that's different. So I'm understanding that there are different levels to what we're talking about. But here in Conflict Resolution, we're not talking about parenting. We're not talking about nothing like that. We're talking about in our relationship, one toward another. Amen? So James 1 and verse 20. Well, look at verse 19. James 1, starting in verse number 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Let me see. Father, thank you for this night. Bless us, Lord, and help us to really grasp what it is that your word teaches. Father, help us through God not to be walking uh, time bombs, dear Lord. But Father, allow us to understand that, first of all, the fuse have to be diffused within us before we can really live peaceful lives. So we pray to God that you will bless us in Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's really something that if you apply fire to certain liquids, they react to it differently, amen? Like if you apply fire to water, you take a match and you light it and you throw it on top of water, what's going to happen? Right, so the water will diffuse it, right? <coughs> Amen. So those of you who know your Bibles know that the Word of God likens itself as unto water. Uh, because the Word of God actually has the power to diffuse things. Amen. That should. If you take a match and you throw it on top of gas, what's going to happen? Oh, man, it's going to catch a fire. Amen. And, and the fire is going to be great. Amen. And you're going to have a real problem on your hand. Because of that kind of fire, not even water can put that out. You can throw water on top of that all you want to. That fire is not going out. As a matter of fact, the only thing you want to do about pouring water on it is spread it. Amen? You want to spread that thing. That's all you want to do. It's not going to put that fire out. So, the thing is, you have to understand that depending on what kind of element you have in you is going to determine what happens when the fire burns. Because fire conflict is going to happen. Amen? You have to just mark that down. It is going to happen. It'll happen in church. It'll happen outside of church. It'll happen in your family. The conflict is going to happen. Hmm. The problem a lot of times with it is that we are unprepared for it. Amen. it we, it's almost like we don't know how to prepare hmm. for conflict. You do, though. The, the question is never, do you know how to do it? The question is always, are you willing to? Are you willing to do what it takes to prepare you for what is coming? You know, when I was younger, our teacher would sit down and review and 
give us the understanding of what the test is going to be over. And just like me a knucklehead, I would go home and throw my books over in the corner and just be worried about going to see my daughter. That's all I was worried about. I wasn't worried about the dumb test, amen. Uh, I could guess my way through it, I thought. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. And it's the same concept. When you go home after church, you take your Bible and throw it over in the corner. And for the next three or four days, you have a better relationship with your cell phone and with your television than you do with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Then you are now prepared for the conflict when it comes. Amen. Just like somebody stated tonight, what you do in the midst of conflict shows where you are. It tells you where you are. It is like a part of you comes out and says, yeah, you know why you're here. You know exactly why you're here. You know exactly why you're angry. has nothing to do with the individual. You know exactly why you're here. You know exactly why you're handling the situation the way you are. Because you keep hearing the same stuff every Sunday, every Thursday. The pastor is reminding you every time. If I could have church every day, I would preach the same message seven days a week. Which is get your butt in your Bible. I will preach it until it pours out of your ears. You will wake up in the morning and hear my voice. Get in your Bible! Amen. <laughs> See, the main problem with being able to resolve conflict lies in the fact that the real problem is spiritual. But we try to handle it physically. The real problem is spiritual. And you have to understand that. Because you have to, you have to prepare for spiritual battles a little different than you do for physical ones. Amen? When I was younger, my brothers always boxed me. I didn't understand why. I just thought they were trying to pick on me and bully on their little brother and just beat me up. As I got older, I realized why they did. They did it to make sure that if I ever got in a situation, I could handle myself. And I didn't realize that until I was sparring with somebody one day, and we was just playing around, and he threw a jab at me, and I blocked it and went over top of it with an overhand and thought I was going to knock his teeth out. And it was an accident, but it was instinct. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, now I understand why. I was about 17. And I thought to myself, now I understand why they did that. I understand why it was so important that they made sure that I could take care of myself. It wasn't even about them trying to bully on me. It was them making sure that I was prepared. Well, unfortunately, in the, in the spiritual realm, it doesn't matter how well you can fight physically. <laughs> you can be the baddest person in the world, but you will still be a failure. Because of the fact that in the spiritual realm, it's not about physicality. Amen? As a matter of fact, if you would, um, if you would look at Galatians chapter five real fast, this is a well, well-read scripture here. As a matter of fact, a lot of you could probably quote it. Amen. But. Ephesians, I mean Galatians 5 is starting in 18. It says, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, endings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And you see the word wrath and strife, and seditions, heresies, and those words. Notice that the word variance means contentions. The word variance means contentions. That is a work of the flesh. Whenever you find yourself contentious, that is not the work of the spirit. That is the work of the flesh. Who is it, by the way, that always appeals to the flesh? If God appeals to the 
the spiritual man, who appeals to the natural man? The devil does. Amen? He does. No, yes, the enemy, the enemy appeals to the natural man. Amen? Yes, it cannot make you do anything, but the thing is, you turn yourself over to his control every time you don't do what you are supposed to do in your private time. Amen? So there's the word variance. The word strife means selfishness. It's so easy to get there, isn't it? That's another work of the flesh. Seditions means dissensions, or it means as well disunity, to divide. Um, that's what it means. Amen? It's a dissensious attitude. Um, and then the word sensual means natural. Amen? It means something or somebody that's controlled by the natural man or the flesh. Now I know that that sounds like a lot, but it's really not because it's all talking about one thing. It's talking about the fact that you are led by an unholy spirit, an unholy thing that is happening inside of you that you're not dealing with. And when you don't deal with it, it manifests itself. So I hear people say all the time, well, you know, I'm trying not to be angry. I'm trying not to be this. I'm trying not to be that. And then my question is always one thing. What are you doing not to be that way? What do you mean you're trying not to be? What, you're trying to take your mind off of it? You know, I told y'all three terms one time. I told you there was a thing called peacemaking, peacebreaking, and peacefaking. And a lot of people dwell right somewhere in the middle between peacebreaking and peacemaking. A lot of people dwell there. Amen. Oh, I'm fine. I have no problems. I'm good. God bless you. I'm okay. And you know you're lying. Well, then the very next thing that happens because you lied about it, the very next thing that happens is you dwell in peace breaking. Now you somewhere trying to beat somebody up. You somewhere trying to cuss somebody out. And they're looking at you like, oh my gosh. You just said that everything was fine. Now you're talking about how horrible of a person I am. How does that happen? Amen? Amen. If you really want to live a godly life, you must start always feeding the flesh. Most Christians spend more time feeding the flesh than they do anything else. You know what I mean. Amen? Amen. I ain't gonna talk about it too much. See, we have to learn to spend time with God. This is where the heart is prepared. The mind is renewed. Peace replaces worry and regret. This is the place of patience. See, patience must be planted in the fertile ground of trust. Amen? Amen? Because I'm not going to endure hardship if I have no trust that God is going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. That is the thing that happens. Somebody does something to me, I get mad, and now I'm vengeful because of the fact that I don't believe that God is going to handle the situation. At least not the way I want him to. And so then I'm, tot I'm tottering back and forth between, you know, everything. Right? Amen. Amen. Hey, Doc. So, trust plus hardship equals patience. Amen. Amen. Trust plus hardship equals patience. The thing is, if I trust God, it doesn't matter what kind of conflict is going on because my trust in God is grounded in my relationship with Him. So it doesn't matter what's going on, I will not handle it in a bad way. People say, well, Pastor, I'm only human. That is an excuse. Don't use excuses. Amen? See, what we have to start doing is that we have to start using this situation as sin that we must confess. If I get out of pocket, I am sinning against God, and I must confess it, regardless of what somebody has done to me. Amen? It is sin. It truly is. The Bible just says that wrath is a work of the flesh. The Bible also says that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm -hmm. Cannot please God. Amen? So then it must be confessed as sin. Then people say, well, God gave, God gave us the emotion of, of wrath, so God gave us a whole lot of emotion that we have to <laughs> keep in his right place. Amen. Uh -huh. 
Amen. Somebody say amen in the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. So anyway, trust is developed by the way. Let me ask you all. How is trust developed? What do you do to develop trust in God? Read his word. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. But can I totally be devoted to God if I don't trust him? Yes. Okay. But can I put my confidence in a God that I don't trust? Nope. To what? Try him. Okay, like what? You know how he say, fool me. Okay. Alright, okay. So we're in different situations. And you go back and see. You go back and look at all the things that God has done for you. So you brought you through. No matter what comes up, you know, you see in here. Okay. That's what you do. Okay, yes, ma'am.
to live for you. Amen? Yeah, that's when that's when things are getting serious. Amen? Amen. Somebody once said, if you ain't praying, you're praying. Amen? Amen. So, when conflict comes, you can only respond from the place where you are. In other words, if you're submitted to God, you will find it truly impossible to submit. If you're not submitted to God before conflict, you'll find it truly impossible to submit to Him during it. Amen? Amen. You must understand the difference, by the way, between submitting to God and not doing or doing an action. Amen? Again, I don't really want to focus you on doing an action. Amen? Because then you are like a teeter-totter. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you fail. Depending on where your mindset is. Amen? And so you're just, you know, you're up and down. Amen? And uh, I think there's a Bible verse that talks about, um, that talks about a man, uh, um, he's like the wave of the sea. Ah, I think it's in the book of James. Yes, amen. Yes, it's in the book of James. Yeah, double mighty man, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, because the Bible says, let, that, let not that man think that he receive anything of the Lord. Amen. I remember we used to sing a song, double-double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Anybody find it? one eight. One eight. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right there, attitude. James one eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. 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 And I think that, that was the verse I was looking for, but I thought it was going to go a little deeper than that. But it's all right. Amen. Um, I wanted to find the one, the wave, there's a wave of the sea that that, that man think he received it from himself. What's, what is it? Yeah, you're right. Verse 6. Yeah, you're right. I'm looking down. I should be looking up. Amen. 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 But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally, and never if not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I just want to say one more thing, and then we're out of here. Amen. Um, is this? Is that? Um, we need to commit ourselves to the Lord. You know, the Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know the word wrestle? It's another word for face-to-face -face conflict. We do not conflict against flesh and blood. Our conflict is against spiritual powers. Mm -hmm. Amen? That is where the conflict is. But we cannot understand that and see that if our relationship with God is not very easy. Amen? So, in closing, you must find time to get in his presence. Our conflict is not with people. And I wanted to say that tonight before I went any further because if y'all as a people of God do not determine to walk with him every day, then this study that we're doing is in vain. It truly is. It's in vain. And you will always think that it is about my action and not about my heart. It's not about your action. It's about what drives your action. If your heart is right, then you will be driven into right action. Amen? Amen. If your heart is wrong, even if you do the right thing, it doesn't really matter. Because it's only a matter of time before you run out of patience. Before you come to the end of yourself. And then once that happens, you're going to handle a situation just like you always have. Please do not take this lightly because the thing is, I've seen a lot of people get driven away because they didn't know and could not control their own mind and their emotions. And they was driven away. Driven out of the will of God for their lives. 
because they, they did not take their relationship with God seriously. And I'm hoping that we all are wise enough to understand that we can't be like that. I remember when I was younger, older men used to always say, a word to the wise is sufficient. But a thousand words to a fool would never suffice. Amen? But one word to the wise is sufficient. Now, the enemy is really trying to cause havoc. Amen? I mean, I'm telling you, this week, I've dealt with more conflict than I have pretty much at any other time in our ministry at one time. I mean, it was like one after the other after another after another after another. Now, I'm feeling like a referee. I think I need to start getting paid referee wages around here. Right now. I'm feeling like a referee or a fireman. I keep trying to put out fire. And I'm understanding that part of that is the enemy, but part of it is the fact that whenever you are taught about something, you go into the testing stage mm -hmm. to see how much you're retaining and comprehending. It's a lot deeper than that, but that's that's what I'm parking tonight. Amen. We'll get we'll get back into it next week a little deeper. But Father, thank you for this night. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I do pray for your people, dear God. Lord, as you told Peter, you said, Peter, the devil have desired you, that he may sift you as me. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. Father, I pray that you would help us today, dear God, to understand who the object of our faith is. It is not in things, it is not in other people. Lord Jesus, you are the object of our faith. Help us, Lord, to always look unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. Help us, dear God, to commit ourselves to you as you did, Lord Jesus. You committed yourself to the will of the Father. Lord, you committed yourself to the Father, even to the point when conflict came, you didn't even respond because of your commitment to the Father. Help us, dear God, to follow in those steps. Bless us as we go. We pray, dear God, that you would help us to walk with you, dear Lord, in understanding that, Father, the days are short and the enemy is trying to discourage your people from doing your work. But, Father, we come tonight against the enemy in the name of Jesus that you would help us, dear God, to walk with you always. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. God bless you.